All right, so this is probably the most I've feed them and I do it just once a week like this. Sometimes, not every time. But today I did and what I did is I uh, turn off the, the return pump and just let the MP10 circulate the water and all the food I placed. And uh, what I did uh, feed them is, I'll show you guys in a minute right now. I put some, uh, yeah, but before I tell you what I did, let me show you the polyp extension on these things. Uh, if you could see there, Look at that separation, and it's all. I think it's separating, and I've never seen that. Today is the first time I've seen that. So, looks like it's happy. It's kind of like a buffet for them. I put a little bit of everything, and uh, this guy's looking good. Uh, this is my new addition, a gold torch. It has two possible three heads and uh, look at that polyp extension there. And the color is just amazing. The other one on top is turning nice and green. Yeah, let me show you all something else. What else was it? Oh. Look at these guys. They're all gobbled up. Their bellies are full. And so are these guys. They gobbled as much as they can and they're all nice and plump. Yeah. So what I did feed them was... Take this off. Um, first of all, I placed some of this polyp booster. I left it in for 15 minutes so they could entice them. And it is, hold on, let me put auto focus. So it is a super concentrated coral nutrition and feeding response trigger. After I did that, I placed uh, in a cup some a pinch of this cobalt or marine omni. This is flake food. <clears throat> and uh, marine veggie. Mysis spirulina and uh, CA mysis. I did a pinch. Nope, I didn't do this one here. I did uh, this one, New Vision. It's like a flake and pellet food. I put in some refroids. Uh, I placed in some Celcon for nutrition and I placed some of this Kent Garlic Extreme and uh, let me show you what else I did. Uh, this is the, the food I placed. I put some, uh, I believe this is Rotifers, uh, some brine shrimp, a cube of each. I put some PE Mysis, some Cyclops, and uh, last but not least, some LRS Refrenzy. Uh, I placed all of this 
along with the rest I showed you in a little cup and turn off the return pump and this is what you get. I'll be doing a water change today, uh, cleaning some filter socks, replacing the filter socks and I'll show you guys that in a minute. So now I turned up the water, uh, the power heads up about 95% on nutrient transport, nutri nutrient transport mode. I can't speak. And uh, that stirs up all the detritus, all the stuff. Gives me a chance to clean the tank without putting my hands inside. And uh, it throws everything into the filter socks here. And uh, skimmer's doing its thing. I emptied this one out because it was overflowing. And this is my fresh water for testing. Uh, this was before I feed, before I do anything to the tank today in the morning. So there's a fresh cup of water there from the tank uh, to measure my uh, parameters, which I'll post later on. Alright, this is what my uh, water change schedule looks like. Not schedule, but maintenance routine. I have these two buckets. Sometimes I do 10 gallons, sometimes I do 5. So I just keep my filter socks in here. And I have some new ones I bought. And uh, what I do is, I could do this one-handed. Please excuse the shakiness. Uh, <laughs> water bucket down there, lift it carefully, we got some copepods as you can see, try to get them off, go back, go back, they're really stuck on there. Yeah, and on this side, and I have some microalgae back there with a light LED lamp, which has a schedule, uh, reverse schedule, and uh, I that helps for the pH. So here, let me show you guys how I. Do this one handed here, place it in there. And there it is. One filter sock replaced. Now on to the next. And on this side, all I have to do is it's a little bit easier. I don't have any microalgae on this side, I only have it on that one side there. See all that gunk. This is about a week's worth. And uh, yeah, uh, what's that new one? Just uh, I oh, I do have some um, what's it called? Um, I have a mesh bag with uh, some uh, ceramic media. I kind of stir it up a little bit. If there's any detritus back there, it could make itself into this skimmer here. Cup, as you can see, it's pretty full. Placing it. There you go down and hold this down. This is a thermometer I use to double check and I also have this little uh, Coral Life temperature gauge, temperature thermometer, temperature thermometer. I swear I can't speak today. And you can use it on Fahrenheit or Celsius. I use F for Fahrenheit, 79.7. So it's pretty hot here in California like I stated earlier. 
So that's done with the filtration on the filter socks. Now we're gonna use this here to this little device I created, which is uh, I put this pipe here just to hold it in place, and uh, a little T, and uh, I don't have to worry about the tubing coming out of place and wetting all the floor. So I'll show you guys how I do this in a minute. As you can see, the siphon has been started. Place that little tubing there. Goes all the way up. And then I have this little wand where I could uh, kind of just uh, stir up the little particles here. Sorry about that. It's uh, harder for me to, it's harder than I thought. Uh, I had to rearrange all the corals and move them around on the bottom to get all of the detritus. But this is what I do and I usually take about uh, that much. Uh, it's a five gallon uh, bucket from Home Depot. And uh, take some gunk out, all of the detritus, all the, the waste and yeah. Time to, oh, I forgot to show you guys why I did this also. Uh, once it's easy, I just tap it and boom, no mess. All I have to do is just set it aside. That's it. So, mixing my water, I put uh, about uh, there was about two to three gallons in there from the previous water change, was a, uh, which was a week ago. And I added another five. And I use Red Sea Pro uh, salt, and uh, it seems to look pretty clean. It dissolves fast, and uh, it's an accelerated formula for coral growth. And that's what I've been using since the beginning and that's what I'm using now, so I created this little thing here as a filter so there's any large particles or anything it gets trapped in that little sponge there and I rinse that out every one to two weeks and uh, there's two pumps in the bottom uh, one is here and one is here and here and then I have this uh, I got MJ1200 pump with this little uh, tube and I just uh, turn it on and I fill my tank and that's how I do my water changes. So right now I'm looking at about 7 to 8 gallons worth of water change and uh, right now it's 85.6 because it was in the garage. <clears throat> and it's very hot outside here in California, especially in the in uh, Ontario, California. It's pretty hot, so it's about 100 and plus degrees, 101, 102 degrees outside. The garage was pretty warm, and the water needs to cool down a little. Uh, I'll try to speed it up by placing a fan on this uh, trash pan, root root trash pan, and. Uh, after it's done, I'll show you guys how I do the water change. Okay, so now I just uh, connect the uh, MJ1200, which I have all hooked up. I have this on uh, some wheels, so you can just move it around. It makes it a lot easier. And uh, just hold that down. And replenish all the water I took up. I had to reset the, I put some more water in there because when I turned the pump on, uh, it sucked all the water into the pipes and I had to put some more water in there. But yeah, should stop any minute now. <laughs> and now. And there you 
there he goes. So it keeps your, the float switch keeps it, uh, whenever that float switch or the optical sensor notices that the water lowers or goes beneath that uh, mark, auto top off kicks in and you have your five gallon jug on the bottom as I showed you and uh, it does uh, replenish the tank with fresh ROTI keeping your salinity in check. So is this, it's cloudy now. Uh, it'll clear up uh, in a minute or two. I'll show you guys the difference. Alright, so I cleaned out the protein skimmers and uh, I made sure I did it with a one of these uh, brushes and what you want to do is from the inside of that uh, skimmer cup uh, it's best to use one of these cups so you won't get that residue <clears throat> from your hands on there and just with uh, some warm water and rinse them off and put them back on and uh, let's assemble them back together and I'll show you guys what they look like back on all right so here they are back on and uh, turn them on and they're fresh and clean for another week so time to change the top off uh, water uh, this is the old one and what I do is I just pull out the old uh, pump which is right here and the uh, heater which is down there and I just replace it along like this. This is a five gallon uh, jug and everything just works and that's all our ODI water. So what I do is I just uh, place it right there. And that's good for about probably a week, week and a half. Uh, depends on the on the heat and uh, when they open the doors or whatever. So yeah, usually lasts about a week. 